Good morning. How are you all doing? This is the crowd that remembered to reset their clocks. And in an hour, the rest will show up, right? <laughs> Would you all stand with me? Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord. We just invite you to come and, and just dwell with us as we worship your, your holy name, Lord, and, and spend some time with you this morning. Let us forget about everything going on outside in our lives, Lord. We know that all of that is in your hands. You've got a plan for all that because we live in your providence, Lord. Uh, so just let this worship be a... a great sound in your ears and pleasing to you, Lord, like a, an incense. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord together.
we can walk out of that grave with Jesus. We know that you are there.
Hallelujah. And on that famous mountain, Jerusalem, called Mount Calvary, the place of the skull, whatever you want to call it, is where they're hugging on a cruel cross. For you and for I. Thank God for Jesus, the Messiah. We're getting the ready to celebrate Easter in a couple of Sundays. And on that day, we'll be having communion. And I want to just tell you. The only reason that we can do that is because he poured his blood out freely. No man took his life. He gave it freely on that cruel cross. Thank you this morning. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. If you love him, say amen. Amen. This morning. Hallelujah.
remember to set your clock last night. Go ahead and set the raise your hand. How many you forgot? Oh, well, you, if you have a phone that works like that, great. I don't. Uh, I, I, my phone is. Anyways, we're glad you're here. Amen. Amen. You braved the weather. Last week was tough. In fact, we had to cancel last Sunday. How many showed up for church last Sunday? Michael and uh, Jim, you were here for church? No, I didn't. Oh, Sean. Sean was here. Martin came there. Out there shoveling the sidewalks and getting ready. I called Sean and said, Clark, I said, look on the cameras. I said, what are you doing? I said, we're in a parking lot. I said, well, we're not going to do it today. Just people couldn't get out. So we had to cancel that. We also had to cancel Friday night uh, Young Adult. And uh, guess what we're doing? What? Putting that back on the calendar for this Friday night. And then so Young Adults, you're back on. And uh, so write it down, it's not on the calendar. Uh, remember, and Sean will text you to remind you. And uh, this, I believe, is your game night. And uh, so I, I don't know anything about that, but they're going to have dinner and uh, a games and uh, Bible Jeopardy or to tell the truth. Which is it? <laughs> uh, Bible Jeopardy. <laughs> Amen. So uh, young girls come and uh, enjoy the night. Praise the Lord. I just want to say, uh, you know, I have a couple of other announcements. Uh, remember our sunrise breakfast. I don't have a calendar up here. Remember <laughs> our sunrise breakfast. Uh, I've got it up here for this March calendar. Uh, remember our sunrise breakfast on Easter at 8.30. And uh, you'll enjoy it. Is it this coming Wednesday? Is No, a week from Wednesday is our annual business meeting. On a Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday, I got two board members up on the platform that'll correct me. Is that right? All right. A week from Wednesday at 6.30. Amen. Be here. Every voting member, we need you here. Uh, and uh, we'll have our business meeting. Voting on two uh, board members. Uh, and so we need your input on that as well. Something special is getting ready to happen. Uh, you may not have heard of this group from Nashville. It's called the Man Clan. M-A-N-N. -N. Uh, it's a man family, and their group is called the Man Clan. And uh, they've been touring this past few months on the West Coast. Uh, they tour with Jason Crabb. I don't know who Jason Crabb is. Uh, in fact, he co-wrote some of the songs on one of their albums. Uh, he won't be with them, but uh, they're going to be here on a Sunday morning on June the 2nd. Amen. In a morning service, uh, they'll be singing, and he's a great preacher. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. We felt like we needed to do something. You know, how many would enjoy that? Amen. 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 There's not that many evangelists out there anymore. And it's hard to do a revival. One of the problems with doing a revival is it takes people yeah. to do the revival. And if you do more than one or two nights, people don't come. But that's all right. We can do it all in one day. Amen. So be here on, write it down, June the 2nd, uh, Sunday morning, morning only. So be here and enjoy it. We're glad to have all of you here this morning. How many remember I was preaching a sermon, a, a, a series? Series. How many remember what I was series I was preaching on? Could you remind me? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I uh, I spent the past couple of weeks getting ready for last Sunday. I spent the week before and then. 
So we didn't do it, so it's been for us the week doing preparation. So it added two or three more weeks to my series. But that's all right. I've determined I'm not going to get in a hurry. Is that all right? You know why? You need to hear this. Praise God. Amen. I need to hear this. And if I need it, I know you need it. Amen. I am preaching a series from the pit to the palace, Joseph's, Joseph's journey to victory. And I'm talking about when your dream turns into a nightmare. How many people dream? At night. Sometimes I remember. Everybody dreams. That's awesome. I've had some great dreams. I've had some scary dreams. I don't know what they all mean. I can sometimes think I know what they mean. There's times I feel like there's something just chewing on my back. <laughs> Freddy, no. Then, 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 then I realized, wait, my back's hurting, you know. Uh, so you have funny dreams. Some dreams are just based on what you're going through. Some dreams are because you've eaten too much pizza at night before service, I mean, before you go to bed. That's not a good thing. Don't fill up on pizza at 10 o'clock at night. Then they expect to have a great night. <laughs> Amen. But some dreams are from God. Amen. And those dreams are important. And uh, Joseph had a dream from God. It was a prophetic dream about what was going to happen. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses here to you. Genesis, I'm going to start in Genesis 37. I'm going to start about verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty and there was no water in it. They sat down to eat the bread, and they lifted their eyes up and looked. Behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, go, going to carry it down to Egypt. Judah said to his brother, What profit us if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? That's what the brothers wanted to do. They wanted to kill him. How many got a brothers and sisters? You ever want to just kill him? <laughs> I know that my brothers and sisters a time or two wanted to kill me. I was very annoying. Hey, if you don't believe me, ask them. They said, what profit is it for us to kill our brother and conceal his blood? Verse 27, let us sell him to Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And the brethren was content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen. They drew him and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Amen. Why did they hate Joseph so much? <coughs> he had all Joseph had a dream. And he dreamed that, at two different dreams, same meaning, that his brethren would bow down before him. And his father favored Joseph more than all the other brothers. He was the Favorite. Did your dad have a favorite? 
No. Not that I was aware of. I must have been it. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? I've got two kids. Do we have favorites? <laughs> you got a beautiful pair. I came they came in last was it Wednesday night? And your little, little girl is named Ava. Ava was not in the mood <laughs> to be in service. She came in and she said, I'm not going in. And she sat right back there by herself. <laughs> the family come up and sat down and he kept looking, Robert kept looking back there and she just went. <laughs> and then I lost track. I don't know if you went down and got it yet. So at that moment, she was my favorite. <laughs> Amen. And I love to see our parents react with their kids and with the grandkids. I've got, how many grandkids? <laughs> Six grandkids, same as Donna. <laughs> We've got six grandkids. And, and I must tell you that there's been one or two that I was, I spent more time with. Not that I was, they're my favorite, but I spent more time with them. And so there's just a, a bond, I, was, I would say. But uh, Tyler's my little man. He's six foot four or five now. <laughs> I want to say, wait a minute, kid. And, uh, but that was their problem. They, they had played favorites. They had played, played, played favorites. And they had, uh, the brothers got a ill content feeling toward Joseph. In fact, they could think no pleasant thoughts about him or toward him. So I told you that, and of course it was from their dreams, uh, and that's what I'm talking about today. I took our verse from Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, the people will perish. And so your dream is your future. I want to say it again. Your dream is your future. I look back at my life and I remember things that I, you know, wanted in my life. I remember going to college. They said, in one of my career classes, they said, write down what you're where you see yourself in a year. And then where you see yourself in five years. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? At this point, I see myself in heaven in a year. You said that last year. I know. <laughs> I'm close to that dream this year. You can't talk me out of my dream. <laughs> But I, I, I listened to some of the kids, and, and Austin's graduating early from, from high school with a dream of going into the military. That's awesome. I can't wait for him to come home in uniform and us salute him. We're going to salute you. We may run you up the flagpole. We're going to salute you. Our, our little man. Yeah. Amen. And, I, and I, I, we were just talking, him and I were just talking about uh, Miss Tory. She's now, what, 31? I cannot believe that. Can you believe that? You know, she had a dream. She cared for people. And she became the nurse that she dreamed of becoming a. And, and you can be what you, but it's got to be a God. I told you how you know. Your dream is a God dream. How many remember what I told you? Have it written down. Good, because I'm going to tell you again. 
You know it's a God dream if it's bigger than you. Your dream's got to be bigger than you. If you can accomplish it on your own, why would you need God? Amen. A God dream is some, a dream that you can't let go of. It's got a hold of you. It's part of you. A God dream is you, you must be willing to give everything for it. It will cost you everything. See, God, you must sell out to God. You must say, God is all of you and none of me. I'm going to let you be the Lord of my life. A God dream is a dream that will last forever. It won't die. You won't wake up one day and say, no, nah, that was just a dream. No, it won't die if it's a God dream. A God dream meets a need that nobody else can meet. God has you, and he designed you especially to do what only you can do. I can't do what you can do. Dare I say this? You can't do what I can do. Amen. 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 What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to work it in. I worked that in today. I don't know what that's about, but Steve. <laughs> Finally, a God dream brings glory to God. Amen. Not to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a God dream. I see so many people that all they can do is talk about themselves in ministry. All they can do is push themselves or push their CDs. No, let me tell you something. It brings glory to God. That's a God dream when the dream brings glory to Him. Hallelujah. If what you're wanting to do does not bring glory to God, it's not a God dream. Let me tell you something. You need to get rid of it. Now, dreams can be lost or stolen. And without a dream, I read to you a proverb, vision. Without a dream, that is a God-given revelation. Opportunities are wasted. There's so much, I, I look out today, there's so many opportunities for kids today that I didn't have when I was growing up. I didn't have the opportunities that some kids have today. Amen. Yeah. My dad died when I was 15. My mom was on her own. Uh, my mom went to uh, Michigan. I was on my own at 15 years old. I couldn't do like a lot of the other kids could do. I had to work two jobs to pay the bills. I had to keep up my grades and I served my God the best I could, the best way I knew how. I didn't sit, now I got angry with God, trust me I did. I got, me and God was in a fight for two years. Guess who won? <laughs> you can go ahead and fight with God if you want to, but I give you some good advice, save you some time and trouble. He's going to win. But God brought me to a place where I could fulfill my dream. He brought me, brought me to a Bible college where I could get a Scholarly education. I wish that I took advantage of it. I met the most beautiful girl in the world. And I, what was that? She said, who was that? And I convinced her to marry me after a few years.
Now I am living the dream. Some of you are living a nightmare. So I want to tell you something. Sometimes your dreams can become derailed. How many's got a dream that seemingly has become derailed? Come on now. I didn't write this because you weren't here. I didn't write this to meet nobody's need. Our dreams, all of us, our dreams can become derailed. It happened to Joseph. He had a dream. But what is it that causes us to get our dream derailed? Let me tell you something. You can't sit back always and just blame God for everything. I, you know, God's got some broad shoulders. He gets blamed for everything. Yeah. And if he don't get blamed, we blame the devil. Yeah. Hello? That was the problem with man from the creation of time. <coughs> they blamed somebody for their sin. Eve sinned, took the fruit to the man he sinned. God confronted them about their sin. Eve, Adam rather blamed Eve. Eve blamed the snake. And the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> I better just stay with my material. But let me cover some things. That I would like to know how your dream got derailed mm. and why it gets derailed. Yeah. How many would like to know that? Amen. Good. The rest of you, you're going to hear it whether you like it or not. <laughs> Things that derail your dream. First of all, underdeveloped character. Hmm. Ephesians 2 and 10, I want to be there for a moment. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. Interesting word in the Greek. That word is poema in the Greek. And it means a thing that is made. Something that's made. A fabric. Like a painting. It's a piece of art. It's where we get our term poem from. Something that's made. Something that's developed. God is working to develop your character. Well, I thought I had character. Well, let's, let's talk about that. Uh, what is character? That's a good question, Randy. What is character? Everybody said, well, Randy's a character. No, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll give you a definition, an easy working definition of character. Character is who you are when no one but God is looking. Amen. Character is who you are behind closed doors. Amen. Character is who you are when you're on vacation. Now I'm going to throw some preachers under the bus. I've seen preachers on vacation that's an embarrassment to their pulpit. One, two. None of you are preachers. And I mean, Sister Gladys has never embarrassed me anywhere. <laughs> Sean's grown <laughs> 
into that. But some preachers, when they're on vacation, when they're away from your pulpit, they're an embarrassment to it. We can cut that out if you want me to later. That's why we don't do our stuff live, so I can correct me. <laughs> you see them out to dinner. I wasn't going to, but thank you for telling me that word. Preach it. I was sitting here thinking, should I say this? Yes, I should. Because I believe it. If you don't believe it, you don't have to even amen it. Amen. But I personally feel it's wrong to drink. Amen. But you'll see some preacher sitting out there to dinner with a bottle of wine. Oh, Pastor, don't you think it's all right with your meal now? I'm not telling you what to do. That's your business. That's your business. But I'm going to tell you something. You can't not get drunk by drinking a little bit. You can, it has to start somewhere. Amen. 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 I've seen them. An embarrassment that their spouse would have to help them to the room. I know of a preacher that actually attended one of our churches. He and his wife his name was I'm going to use first names. His name was Ron. And his wife's name was Donna. Not us. <laughs> Coincidence. And he got to where he would beat his wife. And he beat her one day and she ran out of the house. He chased her down with a car. He got out of the car, going to beat her some more. She said, Kaboom, no, you're not. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God works in mysterious ways, well, all I'm going to say. <laughs> when she remarried a few weeks later. <laughs> 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 Yeah, she was in worse shape than you ever. Where am I going with this? Yeah. <clears throat> Character. God is working on us. He's building character in us. <clears throat> Your character, again, is what you do when nobody else is looking. That's where I went off the rabbit trail. So if we're not committed to develop our character and understand God's process of developing our character, no matter what gift and dream we have, at some point you're going to derail. If you're not committed, the, the character, because your character, and I want you to get this, your character will disqualify you from your dream. The thing that you were trying to pursue, your character will, he will disqualify you. Your gift is bigger than your character. Your gift opens opportunities for you. Your character is like a rudder on the ship. And without character, you end up on the rocks. See, God wants to take you there. He's put the dream in you and he's pushing you and building you. But without character, you're going to crash. You're going to fail. 
Again, character is who you are when no one is looking. Your values, your worldview, your attitude, your choices, your motivations. The world is concerned about image. About looking good, positioning oneself, about appearances. God's concerned about character. I don't try to please the world. That's not what God called me to do. He called me to be Ron Moore. That's who I, I don't know who I was telling this the other day to, but that's who I am. I can't be somebody else. Right. Don't expect me to be a Jimmy Swaggart <laughs> or a Billy Graham. There was only one Billy Graham. What a man of God, never a assault against his character. A man of integrity. I, I tell you the truth, if anybody you want to hold up as a man as an example of integrity is that man. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. But I am who I am. By the decisions I make, the choices I make. Some people like me, some people don't. I, I tell people all I tell people all the time that my church, everyone in my church loves me. Amen. Half of them love me when I come. <laughs> the other half <laughs> love me when I leave. <laughs> if, I'm sorry. That was a joke. So how, the big question is, how does, and you, you agree with me, that we need character. Yes, amen. To accomplish God's dream, you and I need character. Amen. So the big question is, how does God develop character? I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> had you not asked, I could not have answered. Now I'm answering. Actually, God provides help. You actually develop your character. Now, get this. God provides you the help that you need, but you're the one who develops the character. Here it is. James, if you want to put this up, James chapter 1. I'm going to look at verses 2 and 4. My brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience or courageous endurance. Amen. But let patience develop in your life or do its complete work. Now notice this, so that you may be mature, lacking nothing. Hallelujah. Let's delve into that. In other words, God is saying there is a process to get from where you are to where God wants you. It, it's to have the vision and dream and don't let go. Develop it, plan it, work towards it. But there's a journey to get from where you are to where you want to be. And in that journey, unfortunately, there's Things, a thing called trial, Amen. pressures, difficulties, setbacks, pains, griefs, disappointments. Believe me, if you're alive today, that's part of your life. Amen. Amen. I used to think the devil was beating me up, then I realized I'm just getting old. <laughs> And I hope I'm as, and I, Pastor Gladys, you know, uh, Sister Pat, they amaze me. Amen. We, sell, we ate cupcakes Wednesday night to celebrate Pat's 86th birthday. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. 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 
I not only say that because of my, I cannot believe it. Amen. I look at Gladys. Gladys is what, 65? <laughs> not quite. I, I know when not to ask her. I'm not going to ask her her age. <laughs> I'll look it up in a membership club program. 89 in April. And look at this. On the front row. Not the tax, tax but not that. That's her seat. I'm still going strong. So it's I'm not getting old, baby. I'm getting better. I mean, he's got the used car. Some of you walk, I guess. He used to that, Austin. Oh. If you got a used car, first thing you do when you go check out a used car is you want to know how many miles are on it. Can I tell you something? That's not always a good thing. Mm -hmm. You can have 15,000 miles but be 40 years old, <laughs> and I can promise you, you're going to be working on that puppy pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. So I always say it's not the age, it's the mileage. Yeah. So don't ask me how old I am. How many miles do I have? <laughs> He said, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. Oh, how many have patience? Yeah. I got news for you. We're going to talk about that. We have to realize that the pressures, the trials, the difficulties are used by God to develop courageous endurance. To develop character that can stand and last the distance. That's the reason for it all. That's why we have trials. You think we have trials because God has fun just watching you bounce around and trip and fall and <laughs> scrape your knees? You think, well, God, are you enjoying this? No. He's doing it for a reason. God sets up circumstances so we have an opportunity to grow in character. In every trial, knowing the trial of faith, in every trial, that word means to put to the test, to examine quality. And every trial, the thing that causes us, the test that causes us to examine quality, God provides wisdom. I've had some very difficult tests. I'm, I've been doing this for a long time. Be careful when somebody tells you that because they're usually means they're set in their ways. But I've been doing this for a while. I'm, I'm amazed at people that, you know, just got the book yesterday and want to tell us how to do it today. <laughs> Hello? Amen. I, you know, it's the way it works. But God provides wisdom. There's things that I've, I thank God he's given me wisdom. There's things I would not have known how to handle. Amen. Not just in the beginning of my ministry, but I will say at the end of my ministry as well. There's things I did not know, I would not know how to handle. And me and Mr. Donald have just had to sit back and take hands and pray and say, God, lead us. Lead us, God. God, let my heart feel peace about this. Or that. <laughs> with all, with every test, God gives it to you to 
to provide wisdom. Every person faces difficulties and pressures, frustrations, challenges, pain in life. Every person. Generally, people don't welcome these. They respond poorly. They are passive. It must be fate. Or we must be reaping what we deserve. Or they have an escape for it. Fantasy. They try to escape with drugs, with alcohol, suicide, anger, resentment, blame, and bitterness, pride, and self-promotion. But God wants to teach us patience and maturity through the challenges that we face. Or it's either the, talking about the, that works. Triumph of your faith works patience. That word works. Verse uh, 2, I believe, brother. That word works. <laughs> Tried in the King James. Verse 3. Know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That word worketh or works means to accomplish. It's a Greek word, katakasamia. How's that sound? It means to accomplish, to achieve, to repair, or to equip you. God's doing it to accomplish something in you. What? Patience. He's wanting to accomplish something in your life. You're getting those things because God wants to do something in you. He's looking at you. He sees what you need. And let me tell you something. God knows exactly what you need and how to bring something to your life to accomplish that. He's trying to build character in your life. To equip you with patience. That word literally means maturity. God is trying to mature you. <clears throat> he wants you to be consistent. He wants you to be the same way. Yes. He doesn't want you to be blown around. Somebody, you know, they're strong one day and then boom, they get hit by the trial boat, they fall down. They, you know, the difficulty is you got to get back up. Yes. So as you get back up, boom, you get tried again. Yep, hello. Why is God doing this? Talk to God about it. I have people that want me to open the book say, here's what it says, right here on page 4 and 33. You know, well, I, I might do that if that's the case, but ask God about it. You have a choice. This is part of the character building that we don't like to hear. We have a choice. We make the choice. How do you respond to difficulties, to pressure, to setbacks, to disappointments, to pain? How do you respond when you get up the next morning and things aren't working out? How many have ever gone through the day and it seems like everything you touch falls apart? Can we talk? Come on. Come on. 
You wake up in the morning, you get up, and the coffee pot breaks. Bad. You wake up in the morning and the power's out. So you can't have coffee and you can't breathe. I got a portable one that lasts a few hours, but I couldn't make coffee with it. And I didn't have one of those camping stoves. I can remember when at least had a camping stove, throw coffee. But you got to have those things. <coughs> In California, we have got all those things. So they, every other day, you lose your power over there. But they're fixing that problem. They're making charging plants for Tesla all over the <laughs> state. <laughs> like that's not going to fix it, never. <laughs> but how do you react to it? Do you get up and throw your coffee cup across the room? <coughs> I didn't do that, did I, babe? I'm just saying, that, do you do that? <laughs> do you? Freddie knows where to hide when Papa ain't feeling good. <laughs> when, I, when my voice changes, where's the coffee? He, he looks around and oops, and he run. He says, I didn't take it, I promise. <laughs> Rejoice? Do you trust God? Do you say, oh, thank God. I don't have coffee, but God, I'm alive this morning. Amen. I've got a roof over my head. I've got water that I can drink. I've got a refrigerator that's full. I've got, you know, uh, a blanket that can I got everything I need, God. All I need is you. Amen. How do you react? Do you get mad and angry and Cuts out the power of pet. Hmm. Don't say amen at that point. Do you trust God or do you react? If you don't know what to do, ask God for the wisdom. Give me a quick example that I'm getting close to putting a, a not a period of dot, dot, dot. <laughs> the example of Joseph, how God prepared him. Joseph had a dream. It was a big dream. He dreamed that one day his entire, well, he didn't know, but the entire nation of Israel bowed down. I told you it's got to be bigger than you. Genesis 3, 7, and 5. Now Joseph had a dream. It must have been a God dream because it's bigger than him. He couldn't let go of it. He was willing to give everything for it. It would last forever. It would meet somebody else's need. And it would bring glory to God. It was a God dream. God put a dream, a prophetic dream, in Joseph's life. That was his life's purpose. Joseph was not clear about how the dream would be fulfilled. He was only 17 years old. Imagine that. And undeveloped in character and wisdom. Joseph's dream was bigger than his character. Joseph's dream, because of it, he faced several painful situations that helped his character develop. That paper is sticking together. And I'm going to this would be a good place to stop, would it not? I can keep going if you're still awake. Some of you have to go and take a nap because you got up early this morning. Amen. Thank God for coffee and donuts. Amen.
wake us up. Having to know we have coffee and donuts. Amen. Right, right at the back here. Yeah. <laughs> Tea and hot chocolate. If you want fruit, bring it. But anyway, no, we have a great time. Amen. I'm going to finish this up next week. How many believe that? <laughs> I'm going to finish up part one. Yeah. <laughs> Austin believes me, don't you, buddy? Austin, you going to help me next Sunday up here? Setting up a chair there. Singing and. <laughs> Amen. Just stand with us. One of my biggest enjoyments, rather than preaching, is teaching. So thank you for allowing me to teach yes. God. this morning. Praise God. Amen. I, I, I've learned that uh, I'm just going to do what I enjoy doing. Amen. 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 I used to hoop and holler and jump up and grab the chandelier. <laughs> Uh, my chandelier grabbing days are over. <laughs> Thank God. We just grab these and fall down on us. <laughs> but I want you to know something. God loves you more than you'll ever know. And He's got a purpose for you, He's got a purpose for your life. He's calling you to do something I could never do. You're in a specific situation that God's called you to do. And maybe taking care of your parents as they get older. Maybe helping your grandkids. And maybe just helping each other get through retirement. But God's got a purpose in your life. I can't wait to see how Amy develops because of parents that are feeding into it. And I would love to say your daughter's name, but I forgot it. Ava. Ava. I don't know every time. Aiden and Ava. I've watched Sean's kids grow up. People of character. Because they poured into their lives. They're doing a job that I could not do. God called them to do it. Amen. God called you to do something. He develops you to do. He said, hey, Pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't believe God's called me to do anything. If I only have five minutes with you, I can identify it for you. My first counseling session is always a get to know me time. <coughs> I said, I want to know all about you. What makes you tick? What makes you mad? What makes you glad? If we could, if we could identify where you're going, and then you can identify how I get there. And let me tell you the truth of the matter: my plans change often. Amen. Because God says no, it's going to be this way. Amen. So depend on God. Trust in God. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to teach you this Amen. this morning. Thank you. I want to finish up my teaching next week or two. And uh, I'm excited because I'm getting ready for the rapture. Amen. Hallelujah. I got a lot to do before then. Amen. And so do you. Now reach over and take your neighbor by the shoulder and wake him up. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this beautiful family. Yes. God, as I look across this congregation, God, thank you for this beautiful family. 
God, you have blessed Don and I, and we are so grateful Thank you. Pastor, this beautiful family. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we ask God as we leave this place, God, that you would develop the character. Thank you for allowing Don and I to pour in the lives of this congregation and help develop the character. Thank you for Pastor Gladys pouring into lives Thank you, in this congregation and developing character. Thank you for people like Sister Pat that's pouring into the ministries that she's doing. And God, they're, they're, they're growing in character. Thank you for Brother Sean that's pouring into that ministry, God. Thank you for Michael that's not here, but he's pouring into the lives of this congregation, God. Developing character. Father, we want to be a congregation of people of character. Yes. God, you said that your yeas be yea and your nays be nay, God. Help us to be people of character. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want to ask you next <coughs> week to be thinking about something in your life. I want you to think about where God, where you believe God wants you. What he wants you to do. And then we're going to pray with you next week that God would give you the revelation of how to achieve that goal in your life. God can do it. And I believe that he will. Amen. Father, we pray as we dismiss with the service. Yes, Lord. God, that you keep us safe, keep us healthy. And God, should you return before we come back, God, I pray you take us all. Yes. Don't leave a hoof behind. Yes. God, take us all, we pray, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love somebody in Jesus before you leave today. Hallelujah.